you can just stand up and we'll try to get that to you and then we will sanitize that little guy test, after test. we get him back. Uh, okay, first of all, thank you, three of you, for what you said today because I speak for the room when I say it really helped us. And I hope I don't butcher the question that I have because it's a very serious one, which is I am not in any form a programmer. I've tried. I've tried to follow the, in the world where it's all digital and now value and assets and everything are going into the digital world. What I wanted to ask you as someone like myself who is not going to be part of the people creating this new world, and I am trying to learn, and I'm going to ask you where I can learn more about this. How would someone like myself not be left behind with these current institutional people that all go like, okay, real estate, all that, but they don't understand the future? How would I help myself be a part of the future that people are building if I'm not someone who would understand so-called code and all those things? I hope you understood my question. That's an excellent question, and you did not butcher it at all. Would one of you like to address that? Katarina? Let me stay with that, because I'm not a programmer, and I'm not a software engineer, nor am I a software developer, any of the kind. I'm an economist. So I think there's one fundamental disbelief. One, I think it would be naive to think that without the basic knowledge of at least how code works in principle, you should be you know, living a life where you keep all your assets and everything and you hold the key just like you mentioned. There's, there's some level of basic competence. It's almost like the new reading and writing. So it's like the standard basic knowledge that everybody needs to apply. But that, and I thought that was the good thing, is fairly easy to get because it's open source. And literally, if you have the intent, start with a massive open online course, a MOOC, from any of the American or Chinese universities. Start with reading on Medium, listen to podcasts. I think there's never been more access to knowledge than in this particular space. The blockchain community is one that shares, one that's vocal, than one that's outspoken. But on the other hand, as soon as you know how in principle this works, um, there will be some badass developers that develop something new. But at least as long as you understand the concept, I think you're perfectly fine. I would also argue, though, um, and I think that's, that's even more important, a software developer also is also dependent on a team. And I do think, actually, there's more knowledge in this space that's required also on the legal side, on the financial side, on the economic side, on the social side, on the psychological side. So whatever native competence you bring, is also something that can add value in this space. So yes, code is important, of course, but in the end, you need to create a service or product that somebody else is willing to pay for, and that a coder can't do on his own. Thank you. Yeah, so I, <clears throat> I agree uh, fully that we do need some literacy when it comes to uh, this technology. We are moving towards a complete digital age. Uh, you can't not understand basics of how computers work, right? I mean, this is like our also like in a world of books of the last two, three, four hundred years, right? You also want to be able to read. Um, but, um, and, and I think when it comes to blockchain, it's more about also understanding the conceptual way of how it works. I think that's important too. But at the same time, like, you know, building these new uh, standards and building tools that make this usable will actually make it fairly easy for anybody to use blockchain. And I think it's on the end, like, it's with everything. On the beginning, it's complicated, and only a few can use it, and then it's becoming easier and easier and easier, and at some point, you use it and don't even think about it. I mean, you can give an iPhone to a two-year-old, and he's able to like do something with it. <laughs> um, and this is, this is the way w how technology goes. Um, but you know, coming back to technology, it does need the right basic standards and infrastructure to even be able to get there. And this is exactly what we so far hadn't really uh, have in this space because it was very bare bone. And the reason why we made it like this, or why it you know, started like this, is because we needed to start somewhere. If you would have introduced uh, smart contract-based accounts as the default uh, back in 2015, and literally in the MIS browser, the first Web3 browser that uh, we built, um, the, the wallets there were actually smart contracts. They were not just little keys. They were actually already smart contracts. They were not just your identity, really. Um, it would make, have made things too complicated for developers to even understand. And this whole uh, space kind of like grows together and everybody learns together, right? 
So 2015, we learned, oh, tokens, 2016, tokens, ICO, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you can make tokens on a smart contract blockchain. Then, then came DeFi, and people realized, oh, wow, you can combine this, and when you combine this with this, something out comes, which is different, and it's its own token, or can be its own whatever logic, and people learned you can combine this like Lego, <clears throat> and now people learn, oh, things on the smart, con uh, smart contract blockchain can not only be like tokens or money, they can also be art, blah, blah, blah. So it's almost like everybody's like getting through this learning that you, know, you as a developer, when you're working on this and you understand it, already know back in 2015, but like it's the whole world is learning slowly together what this technology does and what it can do. And we have literally di discovered like 0.1% of its potential so far, and what you can do literally just on a smart contract blockchain alone. Um, and that learning will continue, right? The next learning will be, you know, that identity is important and how these things work together and that social aspects will also be on a blockchain, blah, blah, blah. And, and then it will become more usable and easier to use for people and they really just click buttons and that's it. The, do you have something to contribute to this question? I think it's a really valid well, one. The, when I was now in El Salvador and there was this huge Bitcoin conference, uh, at the same time I met the, one of the other citizens who was developing this Edge wallet, right? And for me, I don't really like to play around too much with, with the crypto. I'm, I'm more of a hodler. Uh, but what they're doing now in the wallet, that with one click you could do yield farming, you know, with one click you can stake uh, things inside of the wallet. So, like, you're literally turning from a little bit complicated system and you have to install MetaMask and and go into three websites in order to do something into one click kind of scenarios and it's doing exactly the same thing just that it automates everything for you and i would argue you know there is a huge actually amount of jobs that don't need to understand anything it's uh, you know the industry is literally booming so anything you do in the space will have the future even though you don't understand what how what, you know bitcoin works i think that might be a really good point just yeah. to put out there to answer your question whatever your strength is you're saying that we can kind of combine efforts in that way if we're going towards the same goal but i think also important is to actually make this more attractive for users that are not necessarily either like male white and want to trade and this is literally the blockchain space right now. It's like very much focused on that crowd. <laughs> then, uh, the yeah, exactly. Is, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the, the, the five percent in, in that room. But the really, the reason is like we, if we make use cases, if we allow things that are more in the social space, you will get a lot of more people willing to join and participate. And if, for example, you clicking the wrong button doesn't necessarily like burn your millions of savings, but they may be, in the worst case, like change your profile picture differently. People might be more willing to use blockchain. Yeah, interesting. I wanted to go to the audience again for.